Hi guys and welcome to not the video I expected to be filming next. Hopefully I will be filming that tomorrow if the postie turns up with the item in question. Um, but what, what's this? this? This is a tiny, tiny lathe. This is an Emco Unimat, a Unimat selector, uh, a, essentially a Unimat 2. And what it is, is a small hobby lathe. And for some time, uh, for watchmaking purposes, I have fancied the idea of a lathe. I've never actually had one. And my experience with them is very, very limited. I know, I know what the parts are called. I know, I know the basic principles of it all. But I am very, very new to all of this. And my experience with lathes so far extends to... Um, Possibly about three hours on a lathe back in metalworking school, which was a year or two <coughs> ago. Um, so very, very minimal. So this is all going to be a learning experience. This is really exciting. I have fancied a lathe for some time. I've never had the chance to have one before now. Now I've finally got this, so better lathe than never. Yeah, okay, that, that wasn't good. Um, apologies. But I've looked at times in the past for small watchmaker's lathes. And to buy a full set, they're very expensive. When you can find a lathe with all the collets and everything else, they tend to be very expensive. You can pick up bits, you can pick up a lathe, you can pick up the motors, you can pick up little bits and pieces here and there for not much. But the problem is finding one complete with collets which is really essential you want a good range of collets and uh, a collet uh, chuck without that they're largely useless and they there's they aren't a universal size um across the watchmakers lathe manufacturers uh, unfortunately but to get me into the whole thing i thought something like one of these would be great and i had never ever heard of these uh, the unimat and i just happened to be looking for small lathes on on that well-known auction site and i came across a couple of these and i did a little bit of uh, a little bit of google searching for them and these are a great great little tool they're amazing they're they're a hobby lathe um, they're not, you know, ultra precision. It's a tiny little thing. It is a hobby lathe intended for model makers, hobbyists, um, metal workers and, and such like. It is capable of turning metal uh, in addition to wood. What you see there is a bit of wood. That's oak, I believe. And uh, that is a pen blank. Um, essentially, I have a couple of projects in mind. Uh, one... I want to turn some handles from brass for my espresso machine. And the other one is a pen. I want, I want to turn a pen because I've watched some pen turning videos on YouTube and it looks like great, great fun. I haven't had a fountain pen in years. I used to use one way back when at school and I really liked fountain pens. And I've not had one for years because of the sort of impracticality with regards to carrying them around, they tend to leak and that kind of thing. So I just stopped using them. And I've really fancied a nice fountain pen for a while. And rather than buy one, I thought, why not get myself a pen kit and turn myself a nice bit of wood and make myself a fountain pen. So this is just a test piece. I literally just, just played with this for the first time today. And I do have some wood turning chisels. I have a, a roughing gouge and a skew which came with the set. I'll show those in a moment. But I don't have a tool rest, so I'm going to have to make some kind of tool rest to use those. So for the moment, I've just been turning this with the, um, with the uh, single-edge metal cutting tool that you see in there, which has done a very respectable job, I might add. But getting back to the lathe, this is a really clever system, and it's a clever system because it's modular. So for those who don't know the Unimat system, this is not just a lathe. It's not just a simple, you know, there's, there's your lathe, off you go. It can also be converted into a milling machine, 
into a drill press and with the appropriate attachments with, uh, into a grinder, uh, a, a table jigsaw and a uh, router as well, I believe. And they came in the day, they came with loads of different attachments. So it was, um, a, it was called, kind of like a Meccano hobby set. It was fantastic. And you could buy little tables with a jigsaw blade. You could buy a, a table with a router attachment. You can get a, or you could get a screw threading attachment which fitted up onto the back here so you could actually turn threads. Now that would be great. Um, but the simplest and most common one that you'll see, this section here comes off. There's a, an Allen bolt down here. You unbolt, that lifts away along with the motor and everything else. A large post slots into there and locks in place and then this fastens onto a plate at the top and it can be moved up and down the post accordingly and this handle here, uh, let me just get the Allen key to demonstrate how, oh I can't because I've got this in the chuck. <laughs> I will have to show you that separately. But this handle here, which comes out, is on a spline. And if you loosen these two Allen bolts, you can actually um, use that handle like the handle of a drill press, move it, and it will move this entire chuck assembly up and down. And you can unscrew this fit a Jacob's chuck so you can use it as a drill press up here so you can drill down and you can also with a milling table which unfortunately i don't have you can actually use it as a milling machine so you can get a milling table with a little vise put milling bits in the drill head and mill out slots and grooves and all that kind of thing it's this thing is just amazing it's it's absolutely fantastic i've never seen anything like it and I love it to bits. And I got this as a complete set in its box, which is nice because you don't very often see them in their original wooden box, uh, not the, um, the cardboard box that the later ones came in. So it's in its original wooden box with its original um, instruction box and its original toolbox. Uh, those are just some center drills which I bought separately. Um, along with the clamp for my dial gauge, the dial gauge which you'll have seen me doing the rebuild on on a previous video if you've watched that. So um, here's the Unimat toolbox which contains the Allen key which fits pretty much all of the various Allen headed bolts. Um, there are some bits in here that wouldn't have been in here originally, like the inside and outside um, calipers. Uh, I suspect these would have been added at some later point. There are various drill bits. There are some milling attachments. Um, this one here looks like some kind of reamer. And then you've got um, a countersink, a milling attachment here. Um, a dead center here, there's one already in there, so you've got two because you can use them to turn between centers. And uh, the drill bit's another cutting tool here, and then this which is the key for the four-jaw chuck. This four-jaw chuck, I'm informed, is a, an M14 thread four-jaw chuck with an M12 adapter from a Unimat 3. The Unimat 3 uses an M14 thread. The good thing about it is it's a, it's a really good chuck and a four-jaw chuck gives you great accuracy in centering your work. The bad thing about it is, because of the adapter plate, you lose a fair chunk of space across uh, between centers because that section there is the adapter plate. And as you can see, that's lost a good three quarters of an inch maybe, uh, which is a little bit of a shame. But for the kind of thing I'm, I'm sort of planning on turning, the small sort of stuff I'm planning on turning, it shouldn't be too much of a problem hopefully, but I would like an original M12 three-jaw self-centering chuck. That would be nice. Uh, so I'll be looking out for one of those. So that's the, the key for the, the chuck and the Tommy bar that accompanies that. This is a parting tool which I purchased separately, which comes in its own little holder. And that holder slots into... Um, into the tool bit holder there uh, because obviously the parting tool is very thin and uh, I got that for obviously parting off metal work and taking out this top tray if I can do so 
underneath this we have a faceplate and drive dog for turning between centers. Uh, this for for those who aren't aware screws on in place of the chuck and a dead center would be placed in the middle and then a dead center at this side and then the workpiece would be threaded through this this bolt would be screwed down to clamp onto the workpiece and then that would slot into one of the slots of the faceplate there and that's what would drive the work around so that's for turning between centers uh, for example i could have uh, well, I couldn't with this piece of wood because it's too thick, but say a thin piece of bar stock or a, a considerably thinner piece of wood, I could turn between centres using that. Uh, here is a, uh, a tool clamp for the grinding discs, which you see here. So we've got a flat grinding disc and a cup grinding disc, and that will fit into the slots there and it will also screw onto here. So you can actually swivel this around and fit your grinding discs and use that to re-grind and reshape your cutting tools. Here's a Jacobs chug, chuck with an M12 adapter which will fit either on the tailstock or onto the chuck up here. Um, there's a bunch of rubber washers, no idea what they're for. I suspect they were put in separately afterwards. And here we've got a couple of wood carving chisels. We have got a, uh, a roughing gouge, which is the sort of scoop shaped one, and a skew chisel, which is a flat, um, it's got a slanted end. I'll just pull that out and show you, like so, essentially. And these are for wood shaping. Now, I might know the names of them, doesn't mean I know how to use them. So, um, I only know the names because I've been watching loads of sort of pen blank turning videos and the like because they're just really, really fascinating. I love tur wood turning videos and any, any kind of turning videos, to be honest. They're, I just find them really, really interesting uh, to watch. They're just kind of soothing and calming. And I, having just had a very, very brief play with this earlier, I think I'm really going to have fun with this. And once I've gotten a bit of a feel for it, I would like to try turning some pieces for both my model making hobby, which would be really nice. Give me a, another sort of string to the model making side of things uh, to create very nicely turned add-ons and accessories. And also maybe to make some parts for the watch related um, side of things uh, for the watchmaking. Um, I'm under no pretenses that this is going to be a, as precise as a collet chuck watchmaker's lathe, but at the same time it should be adequate enough to enable me to turn some reasonable pieces for watchmaking purposes. And at some point I would actually like to try turning my own watch case. Who knows? We'll, we'll see how that goes and where that goes. In the meantime, I picked up some pen blanks from eBay, um, a bunch of these. Uh, as I say, this one I've just thrown in there to practice on. And I've been watching pen blank turning videos just to get an idea of the process involved. And I'm going to order myself a fountain pen kit to, uh, to turn myself a fountain pen. And that will be the first thing I do on this. So I'm looking forward to doing that. And once I've done that, I'm then going to completely strip, um, completely disassemble, clean, and reassemble, re-grease, re-oil the whole lathe because it has, at some point in its life, it's been used. I don't think it's ever had a lot of use. Everything feels nice and tight. There's not much in the way of, of play in, uh, in any of the vital parts of it that I can tell. Um, so... I'm going to give it all a good clean, re-oil, re re-lube it because it's obviously been used and then roughly wiped over, put back in its box and being left there for years, I suspect, unused. So it, it has got little bits of um, swarf and, and bits and pieces around it uh, from when it was previously used. And obviously it's got wood 
shavings all over it just now from me playing earlier. Uh, so I want to get it all pristine, spotless, clean and really, really nice and then put it all back together. If Patrick and Lance, uh, the guys from Active Atom, whose sticker you see up here, really, really nice couple of guys who have no doubt forgotten more about small uh, machine shop tools and lathes than I will ever know. Um, if uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, and especially if you've ever had any experience personally with, with one of the Unimats, um, I wouldn't be surprised if you have at some point in, in your uh, small machine shop machine tool shop careers. So uh, please let me know, I'd appreciate that. Uh, for anybody who's into small machine shop lathes and tools and watchmaker stuff, check out Active Atoms channel. They, the, the two guys, uh, they're in, in the middle of the desert in California. Uh, really nice guys and they really, really know their stuff and they have some lovely, lovely equipment in their shop. Um, so yes, if anybody else out there who uses a Unimat has anything useful to throw in, please do so because I am learning from scratch. This is all completely new to me. I know the names of the parts. I know roughly how things work. I am reading uh, about turning speeds and uh, you know feeds and speeds for different materials and such. I've already been informed that the original motor, the AC motor here, are, uh, are not the best and not intended for long duration use should be used for something like four minutes then allowed to cool for a couple of minutes because they can easily overheat and at some point in the future i might very well look at a dc motor conversion with a speed controller because that will obviously give me a little bit more flexibility being able to dial in the speed rather than mess with drive belts which you see here and the manual very helpfully gives you all the drive belt positions. It comes with two drive belts. So you have an intermediate wheel down here that you can't quite see where my fingers are. And then you've got the motor and this one here. This, this is the recommended position for wood turning and I think it's 6,500 RPM uh, in the central portion. And then if you use a shorter drive belt between the intermediate wheel and the motor and then the longer one from the intermediate wheel to the input shaft, uh, and depending on where you put it on these steps, you can alter the RPM relatively easily. Um, it's just a case of slipping on and off the, the drive belts, which is quite straightforward. So that's an overview of the whole lathe. Uh, I will be doing um, a complete strip clean and reassembly of this, and I intend to film that, so do check back if you want to see that. And I might, depending on how well it goes when I've ordered the pen kit, I might see if I can film the making uh, my first pen kicks. That might be quite interesting. So thanks for watching. Sorry if this has gone on a little bit long. But um, as you can tell, I'm quite excited about this. this is a, this cool new toy. I, I like it. So thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Hopefully very, very soon I will have a special coffee related video coming up. So coffee fans, watch out for that one. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye now.